This is the waterfront of Maharak Island. It's a part of the collection of islands which make up the small territory of Bahrain. They produce quite a lot of oil, though not a tremendous amount compared with Middle East standards. But they do, in addition, have one of the largest oil refineries in the world. Bahrain has a treaty with us under which we guarantee to protect her from outside interference. And we have considerable influence in what goes on inside Bahrain. Up till now, our relations with the people here have always been very friendly. Yet on this very spot where I am now, the Foreign Secretary, Mr. Selwyn Lloyd, when he was here on a short visit on March the 2nd this year, suddenly found himself in the middle of a, uh, uh, in the middle of a riot directed against him. That's because the people of Bahrain are demanding from the ruler that they should have more say in the running of their own affairs. What happens in Bahrain isn't important just for, Bar for Bahrain alone. It's important because from here we run the whole system of our relations with the sheikdoms up and down the 2,000 mile coastline of the Persian Gulf. In Kuwait in particular, they're watching very acutely and very anxiously how things turn out here. They'll probably take it as a model for themselves. After the riots in Bahrain in March, we flew out two companies of British troops in case there's more trouble. They keep in the background, but they're on call. The local police have been increased from 300 to 500. They're an armed semi-military force. Bahraini don't like being policemen, so most of them are Arabs from other parts of the Gulf. These recruits are marching past the sheikh in charge of police. Theoretically, the ruler of Bahrain, this is his new palace, is a dictator like the ruler of Kuwait. In practice, he's having to make concessions. His chief advisor, Sir Charles Belgrave, lives here. He was appointed by the ruler. He's nothing whatever to do with the British government. The people of Bahrain have elected a committee to demand reforms which they think Sir Charles Belgrave, the ruler's advisor, has been preventing. And they're making more progress than in Kuwait, mainly because of our pressure on the ruler. The threat to us here is that the democratic forces, who are bound to win in the end, may think we're against them. But there's much more freedom already than in Kuwait. People aren't afraid to speak up. Want Sir Charles Belgrave to go? No, no, I don't want Charles. Yes, I want Charles Belgrave to go from Bahrain. Why? Because Charles Belgrave, he is not advisor of government of Bahrain. He is a he's he's going to the court as a judge. He's going to the police uh, to the uh, court as a, a police commandant. He is everything in Bahrain. He is not advisor. Do you want uh, Sir Charles Belgrave to go? No. You don't want him to go? No, I, do, I want him to leave Bahrain oh, you want before to 20, leave? 24 hours. You want him to leave he, within 24 hours? Yes, because he is an old man. Do you agree with the committee and the demands it's making? Yes. And do you think that Sir Charles Belgrave ought to go? Yes. yes. Why do you think that? Old man this, go to home. Do you think it's a good idea to have the British around here in Bahrain? Yes, for the main time. For the present time? Yes. You don't think they should go away? No. You think that's a, an advantage to Bahrain, to have them here at the moment? Yes, for a while. Only one election, a minor one, has been held in Bahrain. The committee's candidates beat the government by 17 to 1. The members of the committee are respectable merchants. They're not violent revolutionaries. They believe in orderly government. What is it that the committee wants? The committee wants reforms and want to participate in the administration of the country. Does it not participate in the affairs of Bahrain at all at the moment? At all at the moment. People are not participating in their own affairs. It is only one man rule. Now, do you, what is the system of justice in Bahrain? We got no justice. We got no uh, actually. Uh, we got no rules whatsoever. We haven't got a code. We haven't got a final code either. No law and no laws. 
And that's what we are trying to get for this country, or to get laws for the country. Now, uh, what was the cause of the riot when Mr. Selwyn Lloyd, the British Foreign Secretary, was here on March the 2nd? That was actually to give an expression about Sir Charles Belgrave only. It wasn't directed directly to Selwyn Lloyd himself, but the people, as they hate Sir Charles Belgrave and they want him to go, they wanted that Selwyn Lloyd knows this. Now, why do you want Sir Charles Belgrave to go? Well, because he actually is not an expert for administration, and he has been here for the last 32 years, and he did absolutely nothing to improve the country. And I think he's uh, getting very, very old because he's 61 now. And uh, he has all the powers. He's administrating hospitals, police, customs, finance, justice. That can't be for one man. Now, do you want British protection of Bahrain to continue in the future or not? Providing the British government help the people and support them instead of only supporting the rulers as they are doing now. You think that the British government ought to back up some of your demands? Exactly. Now it has been said that your movement is very much influenced by Egypt and that uh, that makes it very anti-British. What do you say to that? That is not correct at all. We love Egypt, certainly, because we speak the same language, same religion, and our education comes from Egypt. We like Egypt very much, but our movement is not influenced by any outside power. Now, are you asking in Bahrain for the complete running of the government, or are you asking for just a few places in some of the committees to assist the ruler and the government? Well, more or less those have been actually agreed upon. But we don't want to have our demands in installments, as I should say. We want them as a whole thing. Do you mean that you won't agree to work anything unless Mr. Charles I, Belgrave goes? Well, we don't want anything to work actually unless we got the whole demands together. Including, Sir, including Charles. Sir Charles Belgrave to leave Bahrain. Sir Charles Belgrave has been in Bahrain for 30 years. This is the garden of his house. Sir Charles, what exactly is the job that you do here? I'm employed by the Sheikh as his advisor, and I'm the, uh, the head of the Sheikh's government. And what was the cause of the trouble which happened when the Foreign Secretary was here on March the 2nd? That was an organized that a demonstra demonstration. It was anti-British, anti anti-Sheikh, and anti-me. And what is the attitude of the government to the demands now being made by the committee? That some of the demands are reasonable and uh, are being acceded to. Some of the demands are not reasonable. Well, why haven't the demands which, uh, which are reasonable been acceded to beforehand? Because they were not asked for before. And negotiations are going on now with the committee? Uh, yes, they're going on. We have a long meeting every Sunday, and we have, have other meetings between the Sundays. And how do you think the negotiations will turn out? I hope that eventually that they will be successful. But do you feel that the future of Bahrain is a fairly calm and happy one? I hope it'd be a happy future, yes.